to have like religious ideas, I try to explain to them about the porcine portion is that it's, it's, it's uh, acellular, uh, it's not being ingested. And I, I, I've even talked to a religious elder and said, look, let's, let's make sure we can use it. And those that don't, I, I just use the PRP. Um, let's talk about laser. This is something new that I've been doing in the last couple of years. And uh, I believe it's, it's a good technology. Sometimes you think it's like, uh, you know, sharks with uh, freaking laser beams, right? Okay, so I always felt that lasers were just like this awesome powers thing. It was just a fantasy. Who knows if it works? God knows. Um, I've been using it for about a year and a half, and I'm really convinced that it's, it's doing something for my patients. Um, and I'm always curious to hear some input. This is a great roundtable discussion. Uh, there's a lot of roundtable discussions on Sunday morning, uh, by the way. So how, do, how does uh, laser work? This, I'm just trying to make things very easy, non-theoretical and basic so you can communicate to a patient. Uh, I'm not a theorist. I just like talking about things. So it was back in 67. A uh, scientist was working on, it, on some shaved mice uh, to see if red light would work to uh, help s treat skin cancer. You notice in those that were treated, the hair grew back faster. He's like, what the heck's going on with this? So the key with this is that it should be around 630, 670 nanometers at a low wattage, which is in the red uh, range for it to work. Um, that's really the, the, the factors that contribute toward a, a great success. The way um, it, it works is that when the laser light comes down, it activates the cytochrome uh, uh, C intracellularly and in enhances gene activity, decreases apoptosis, which is cell death, um, and overall uh, also enhances cell activity and survival. So overall it works to generate and stimulate uh, hair growth. There are many types of uh, products in the market. Uh, initially, there was, I think, a large uh, component of people doing it in office, um, which I still think is a very, very effective method of doing things, but there's also the downside, which is patient compliance of people coming into the office to have to do this. Um, you've heard of hair combs. I'm not here to uh, uh, say, say one laser works better than the other one, uh, but this, to me, intuitively has some issues, which is the fact that this, you can only put so many lasers on here and you've got to keep stroking across the scalp, which may not give consistent uh, uh, coverage. Um, this was the iGro that I believe works very well. It's not um, as expensive as some of the other models that are out there. For example, uh, laser cap and there's Capillus upstairs as well that has uh, more lasers. Um, I sell all these varieties in, in my office. Uh, and I don't want to go through you know, the pros and cons because this is not a, a lecture to, 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 pro um, to promote a product or not. But the, the basic protocol is um, three times a week roughly for about 20 to 30 minutes, you, you know, I think, I, would, I usually say 30 minutes, you can go up to an hour, uh, hour and a half, but the key is not to overstimulate it by trying to do it overnight. So it's really easy, there are really no side effects to this. It's, uh, the only thing you gotta tell patients too, just like when you're using finasteride or minoxidil, there can be somewhere between three to nine months, some effluvium that they may experience where the hairs are converting over to antigen. So if you warn them that, uh, you, it's, I think it's important. Um, it doesn't work in every single person. It, I, I believe over 90% of people are going to have some benefit, if not dramatic benefit, uh, but it doesn't work in every single person. Um, I just saw a study by Dr. Shelley Friedman at the ISHRS meeting in San Francisco that was pretty convincing. Um, he is a consultant for Capilla, so that always, uh, I always wonder, you know, how much, uh, uh, you know, uh, validity there is. But uh, it looked pretty convincing to me. Uh, and again, I don't take any money from any of these companies. And this is uh, from Dr. Uh, Bob Leonard. I actually emailed him and I said, do you mind if I use your slides? Uh, this is from a chapter he wrote on, on low-level lasers for my book. He looked at over 4,600 patients over 12 years, uh, found that, um, well, something very interesting to me, and I'm curious to hear from the uh, faculty what they found about this, is that 10% of people after the first year required ongoing treatments, um, and the rest of the 90% held their results. Um, and he's, his protocols in the book, I, I, don't, I didn't memorize it, but it's, it, it was interesting that he's, he, and so at one year after laser treatments, he would decide and look at those that were, um, that shed and started to shed within one to three months, he would put them back on an active protocol. And those that didn't, he just found that the hair sort of continued to stay. Um, and I don't know how, how accurate that is, uh, but I think it's interesting. You know, it's an interesting comment. These are after, all, both these photos are after one year uh, of time. 
So um, I'm actually curious, I think part of this lecture is better than my just talking about. Is there any, any comments from the faculty or, or users out there of what products they use or without trying to endorse anything and, and uh, what protocols or what they've seen or how do they use it to minimize shedding? How, when do they do it after a transplant or any comments about that? <laughs> 